All right. Good morning. Good morning. Let's, um, once you guys get yourself set up, come on into a nice, comfortable, upright position. We're going to start. We'll start upright with a little breathing, and then I think we'll come on to our back after that. So, oh, let me just change my screen. Okay. So, good morning. Happy Tuesday. Happy cool Tuesday. Air feels like fall is approaching. I don't want to say it, but it is. <sighs> All right. So, come on into your space. We're going to start upright with a little breath. A little breath work. So, find a nice comfortable, easeful place for your body, where you can sit up nice and tall through the spine, hands can rest on your lap or palm and palm, whatever lets your shoulders get heavy onto your back and, and the front of your body, your chest open just a little bit. You can let your uh, face start to soften. Maybe take a nice big like open mouth. Uh, and let your, the muscles on your face kind of relax and soften there. Let your eyelids get heavy. And then just start to come into your breath. So once you feel like you're in that comfortable space with your physical body, go ahead and let the breath just start to flow at its natural pace, but just start to take some awareness of it. Watching it fill up the body and soften on the exhale. Easy in and out. It's taking these first few moments to really just appreciate the breath. And as you're watching the breath, also check in with the front of the head. Notice what's going on there with the thoughts. What's swirling, what's living there this morning. See if you can just press a little pause or push them aside. Try to calm those thoughts for a moment or two or more. And really just let the breath fill that space. Take another three or four rounds of breath here. Filling up deeply and then fully exhaling. Take another full round of breath in and out. With your next inhale, let's sweep the arms high. Bring them together overhead and then through to your heart center so we can set our intention, dedication, our focus for your thoughts, for the practice ahead, for the day ahead, whichever serves you best this morning. You can go ahead and release the hands. And then if you are sitting on anything, just remove it. We're going to come down to our backs for just a few, um, a few poses, and then we'll come back up. So come on down to your backs and just start by hugging the knees into your chest and letting the lower back kind of ground and feel all the corners so you can take a, a little bit of movement side to side or you can make some small circles and just really feel the corners the edges of the the lower back there of the tailbone sacrum bone 
Try to keep your shoulders heavy on the earth as you do this. You can let your eyes stay closed here if that's comfortable. If you are making some circles, just make sure you take both directions, reverse them. Then go ahead and keep that right knee hugged in. Extend the left leg long and just hug it into your chest. You can keep a gentle flex in those right toes. Off the edge of my mat here. And just hug it into your chest. Again, try to keep the shoulders heavy. This is a little bit of a reset for your SI joint. If you ever have any lower back pain and your, your sacroiliac joint, that's like where your hip and your, and your sacrum meet, it's called a joint even though it's two bones, but the two bones kind of mesh together. They move against each other. And if they are out of line, they can cause a lot of discomfort. So this can sometimes help just realign a little bit. <clears throat> take another breath in here. And then we're just gonna switch sides. So bring the left knee in. Just take a breath here with both knees in and then go ahead and extend the right leg long. Keep the left knee hugged in. Again, shoulders heavy, face soft. A few deep, full breaths here. Another inhale, and a nice long exhale. And then bring the right knee in to join again. Take another full breath with both knees hugged in. And then go ahead and release both feet down. Keep them about hips distance here in your knees. If you have a block, grab the block. If not, no worries. And put it between your knees. So if you don't have a block, imagine you had that much space. That's, so your knees are just about hip distance there. And then really let your feet ground and let your, your whole lower back soften onto the mat. And then very gently just press the knees toward one another. If you don't have a block there, just imagine you do. So imagine that like sort of resistance of moving the knees toward one another. And as you do that, try to ground the lower back as well. So it's nice and flat. Your lower abdominals are, are engaged to kind of keep that lower back Nice and flat, firm. Try to let the shoulders stay soft here. Try not to tense up through other parts of the body. Your arms can just be nice and long by your sides here. And your face soft. Again, your eyelids can be closed here. We're just gonna take a few breaths. This can be sort of a tense and release. So whether you have a block or not, just kind of squeezing your knees toward one another with like maybe a, a three or four count and then releasing and softening and just do that a few times. Take another full deep breath here. And then if you do have a block, just go ahead and release it. Hug the knees again into your chest. Any other movements here that feel good to your body? And then go ahead and rock forward and back once or twice over the length of the spine. Come all the way up and we'll come over onto all fours onto our table. So coming into your table and just starting to wake up the spine now in a forward and back direction. So taking an inhale, dropping the heart, lifting the tail. Grounding through the palms, keeping the gaze just off the front edge of the mat, so not too lifted through the neck. And then go ahead and reverse that as you drop the crown of the head, tuck the tail round through the spine. Still grounding through the palms. And then go ahead and take this another time in each direction. We're going to take it a few more times. So just let your breath guide. You can be moving faster or slower than I am. Take one more breath in each direction.
And then we're gonna go ahead and just come up into a short downward facing dog. So tuck the toes and lift the hips. And just walk this out a few times, a little bit shorter than your normal dog so that your heel of the foot that's extended can pretty much come all the way down to the mat. So you really get a nice long lengthening extension through the back of one leg and then switch sides, bend the opposite knee, lengthen the heel toward the earth. Don't worry if it doesn't reach all the way down. Mine's not really quite touching, but it's almost more so than it does in my regular downward dog stance. Which is that we feel the stretch all the way through the calf and the Achilles. And then just go ahead and take each side. Again, move in on your breath. So it might be slower or faster than how I'm moving. A few times on each side. Grounding through the palms, the fingertips are gripping. So there's awareness in the hands. They're not just flat on the mat, but there's a little bit of, of muscle awareness there. Take another two breaths here. And then walk your feet back to whatever would be your normal downward dog. <clears throat> and then just come into a few breaths of stillness here, keeping the hips lifted. You can come high onto the ball joints of the toes to help lift the hips, and then slowly lift the heels lower while trying to keep the hips high. So creating a little bit more length through the backs of the legs. Gaze falls just right toward the back of your mat. Take another breath in. Nice long breath out. And then go ahead and look forward. Walk your feet to the front of your mat, to your hands. Come into a rag doll. So heel toe your feet about hip distance. Two fists fit right between the, the big toes there. Grab opposite elbows, drop the crown of the head. And then for this first one, Bend your knees as much as you need. So it might be a, a real deep bend for some. Some others might be a little bit more lengthened. Go ahead and sway a little side to side if that feels good on your back body. Otherwise, just take a few deep full breaths in stillness, letting everything run out through the crown of the head so the back body gets soft, the shoulders, the neck. Your internet and wireless should always have you covered. Take and another few deep breaths here. You'll get the best internet experience at home with Xfinity X5. And the best wireless. And then go ahead and release your arms. With bent knees, roll yourself all the way to sand. Just nice and slowly, rolling up one vertebrae at a time, letting the head stay heavy, letting that come up last. And then when you get all the way to stand, letting the arms come by your sides, palms facing the front of the room into your mountain pose. Shoulders are heavy, heart is lifted just a tiny bit. You can keep your feet at distance. So nice and, and balanced there. And then take an inhale, sweep the arms high. And exhale through heart center. Stay standing. Again, inhale, sweep high. Exhale through heart center. Inhale, sweep high. This time we'll add a fold as we exhale, leading with the heart, bending the knees as much as you need to protect that lower back as you come down. Inhale, lift halfway and lengthen. Exhale and fold. Inhale, lift halfway and lengthen. Exhale and fold. And then place the hands on either side of the feet and just step back to your table. Drop the knees back down, come on back to your table, come back into a cat cow. One breath in each direction. And then send the hips back to the heels, bring the hands back by your heels as well. And come into your child's pose for a nice full deep breath in each direction. Maybe an open mouth exhale. Go ahead and come back 
come back through your table, come down onto your forearms, and all the way down to your belly. We'll come into our Sphinx pose. So with your elbows underneath your shoulders, fingers spread nice and wide. Your feet can be about hip distance as well. And make sure the tops of your legs and tops of your feet are nice and flat. And then grounding gently through the elbows, lift the belly button, lift the heart, soften the shoulders, let the gaze drift right off the front of your mat. You just get that heart opening. Guys, you can be closed here if that's comfortable or just a, a gentle gaze. Take another full breath in. And then as you exhale, gently release down. Open your arms like wings to the side and we'll open up through the shoulders with your right palm nice and flat. Roll onto that right hip, opening up to your degree, pausing. When your body starts to resist and just breathing here, you can keep your feet stacked. If you want to add a little bit more openness, you can bend that left knee and just try to put the foot right behind that right knee. Otherwise, just keep the feet stacked, breathing into the shoulder and a little bit of that twist through the spine. Take another full breath. And then go ahead and release, come back to your belly and we'll take the other side extending the left arm all the way out palm nice and flat and then rolling on to that left hip stacking the feet opening up to your degree so when you get there pausing and just breathing Take another full breath and release, come back through center. Come back into your sphinx. So bring your elbows back underneath the shoulders, readjust your lower body and then grounding gently through the elbows, lift the heart, soften the shoulders, settle the gaze and take three deep breaths here. Do that third exhale, gently release down and just slide your hands back by your heart so you can push yourself back to a child's pose. Close knee, hips heavy to the heels. Keep your fingertips extended and a little bit tented as you let the forehead drop toward the earth. Breathing into the back body. Take another full breath and then release and just come on into a seated pose. I'm going to come into a little bit, a few twists seated. So let's start with our legs just extended straight. We'll come into a staff pose first. So just maybe moving the flesh behind the legs, behind the rear. Bring the hands behind, bring the shoulder blades together, lift the heart, flex the feet really strongly, so much so that maybe the heels lift up off the earth and just feel the lengthening sensation through the backs of the legs and the lengthening through the spine. Take another breath and then maybe lift the hands, send them straight up to the sky. Keep the flex in the heels if you can. This requires a little bit more core engagement. Take another breath in and then release and relax the, the legs down and re release forward into your fold. So your hands will drop anywhere along your legs that your body allows. You can bend your knees as well for this fold Letting the forehead come toward the uh, shins. If you have a block, you can slide it right under your knees too, or a pillow. Think about three or four deep full breaths here, really filling the back body with the breath, letting that rounding happen. And then also through the backs of the legs as you get a little bit more lengthening through the hamstrings.
Take one more full breath. And then inhale, come all the way back up. Let's take that right knee, bend it, bring the right, the sole of the right foot inside. And we're gonna take a twist to the right. So bring the right hand behind for some support. Start to twist your rib cage to the right. Keep a gentle flex in that left foot. Send the left fingertips high, inhale, lengthen. And then as you exhale, keep twisting to the right. Elbow can come inside that knee, palm nice and wide, or you can just grab around the front of that leg as well. Try to stay as tall as you can through the spine. Twisting and breathing fully. Let's take two more breaths here. And then with that second exhale, gently come back to center. Let that knee drop open. And let's bring that left leg open as well. Bring the left hand just gently on top of that left leg, right fingertips to the sky. Take an inhale, lengthen, especially through that right side. And then exhale. Just take a bend over to the left. Try to keep your heart facing forward toward the front of the room, so not dialing down. That left arm can rest on your leg if it's comfortable. It can be behind you. Maybe you're a little bit more upright. Whatever lets you start to get some lengthening on the side body, feeling the rib cage lift up a little bit, and just extending through the fingertips. Maybe there's a gentle flex in those left toes as well to keep that kneecap engaged. I'm just breathing here and softening, feeling the body just gently softening into the pose. Let's take three more breaths here. And then your third exhale, use that right hand to bring you back up to center. And then just take another easy twist to the right. Bring the right hand behind, left hand in front. You can keep your legs where they are, really tall through the spine. And just twisting through from the heart and the rib cage to the right. Take another breath in. And then gently release, come back to center. Bring that, um, keep that left leg where it is. We're gonna just come into a modified wild thing here. So bring that right hand back behind you. We're gonna sort of take this left hand and sweep it around as you come up onto that left knee. So make sure, a uh, right knee, sorry, make sure that right knee is on your mat. And opening up the heart toward the sky, toward the back of the left hand, toward the back of the room, and the left leg there for support. And take one more inhale, and then exhale, release, come back down. Then we're going to take that left leg back towards center, coming into a Janya Shirsasana. So maybe at like 11 o'clock, so the leg's just off from center a little bit. And the sole of that right foot stays right where it is. Inhale both arms high, lengthen up through the spine, and then just turning the torso a little bit so that as you exhale, you come into your fold over that left leg. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and just breathing there. <clears throat> Hmm. Taking another few breaths here, really filling the back body with the breath. When you're in this Position, you can send the breath to the, the lower back, the high hip, the kidney area, filling it all up. And take 
one more full breath. And come all the way back up, extend that right leg. Bring both legs out in front and we're gonna come back into our uh, double-legged forward fold, our Pachimottanasana, just one more time. Inhale, both arms high. Lengthen through the heels, lengthen through the fingertips, lengthen through the crown, and then exhale, come on into your fold. Again, to your degree. Knees can be bent a lot, a little or not at all, with the forehead drop in. And just take five deep breaths here. With your end of that fifth exhale, and just slowly come on back up. And then we'll take that left leg, bend the knee, bring the sole of the foot inside that left knee, and we'll get ready to twist to the left. So left hand behind for support, start to twist your rib cage to the left. A gentle flex in the right toes, inhale the right fingertips high, lengthen everything up, and then as you exhale, twist, elbow can come inside the knee or wrap around the front. Twisting the heart to the left and staying as tall as you can through the spine. Take one more full breath. And then as you exhale, gently come back to center, release from the twist, let that left knee drop open and bring the right leg out to the right. Flexing through those right toes, right hand can rest on that leg or inside or outside it, left fingertips to the sky. Inhale and lengthen and then exhale, come into your side bend. Just nice and easy. Maybe you're getting a nice stretch through the inner thigh here as well. So just let your body soften in here. Don't push it too far, too fast. Take it at your pace. Breathing and softening, letting the face muscles soften. You can even let your eyelids close here and really just settle in. You're you know, taking the poses slowly and breathing. Just notice if your, your mind starts to wander, if the thoughts start to pick up. And if they do, just come back to the breath. Take a deep breath in, fill up that space and a nice long breath out. Take another deep, full breath here. And then release, come on back up. Bring that left hand down and then bring it behind you as we come into our modify a wild thing here. So making sure that left knee is on some type of mat, not right on the hard floor. And then we're gonna take the left, right fingertips around as we lift the hips and open through the heart, send the fingertips to the back of the room. Opening, lifting the heart, take another full breath. And then just go ahead and release, come on back down. And then we'll bring that right leg back towards center for Janya Shirsasana. So again, just a little bit off from center. So maybe one o'clock, right toes are flexed. Inhale, both arms high, lengthen, and then turning the torso. So as you exhale, releasing over that right leg. And then the forehead move toward the shin. Doesn't matter if it ever gets close to it, but in that direction. So your gaze is just right down at the leg or the eyes maybe are closed. And again, sending the breath to the back body that's a little bit more exposed here and available to filling up. And take another full breath in and out. And then go ahead and come on up. And we'll release that left leg, maybe give them a little shake. And then bring the soles of the feet together, coming into a bound angle, Adhikonasana. So bringing the pelvis and the heels close to one another. And you can interlace your hands, maybe 
underneath the outer edge there. Sit up as tall as you can. So maybe give the shoulders a big roll so they come onto your back, drop down. And then just let gravity take the knees to wherever they are. It doesn't matter if they're up high or they're down low. Sitting up tall and just letting your, your body start to open here. Again, softening the face, maybe with the eyes closed. And just take a few deep breaths, settling in. Another full breath. And then with the exhale, grab the big toes with the peace fingers and rock back onto your sit bones. And then lift your heels. Try to get your balance there on your sit bones. Try to stay nice and tall through the spine. So it's, it's natural here that you want to kind of let the back round. So as much as you cannot do that, lift the heart and try to stay nice and tall through the spine. Then when you have your balance, go ahead and send your heels to the corners of the room. Staying tall and lifted through the heart. Taking a few deep breaths. If you want to challenge yourself more, let go of the toes and send your fingertips straight ahead. And one more inhale. And then release, hug the knees into your chest. Make sure you have some mat behind you. And then go ahead and rock back once or twice over the length of the spine. And then go ahead and come back up. Cross your ankles, come back into your table. And just take a resetting breath and movement through your cat-cow in each direction. And then tuck the toes, lift the hips, come into your downward facing dog. Long or short, doesn't really matter. Just lifting the hips and elongating through the backs of the legs. And then take an inhale, lift the right leg high, just float it up to your degree. You can open up that hip, you can bend the knee, or you can just keep it all straight and square. So whatever feels good to you this morning, take one more breath in, and then as you exhale, release. And we're gonna take that foot all the way forward between your hands, drop the back knee, and come on up into a, a low lunge. So we'll start up high. So if you have blocks, maybe you grab them and you start with them on the high setting. Otherwise, you can bring your hands to the top of that knee, or you can just kind of let them rest at your waist or your hips. So whatever is comfortable for your, the rest of your body here this morning. Make sure that that knee stays stacked over the ankle and that it's not in front of it like this. It's gonna put pressure on the knee and the ankle joint, so we don't want that. So stay nice and vertical there. And then just let your body soften into your pose here. So grounding into that right heel to help guide the right hip back just a little bit. So there's muscle energy happening in that right leg. You're not just kind of sitting here hanging out, even if you can, we don't want to be doing that. And then try to stay a little bit lifted through the heart so we're not rounding forward. The shoulder blades stay heavy on your back. And then just finding your breath here. If the block's high or too much, turn them down a notch. Maybe some of you have no blocks in your hands or on the earth. You have tented fingertips or, or maybe fists. So a lot of different variations here, depending on your body, your hips, your joints. And just starting to lengthen through that left hip flexor. Getting awareness, circulation, breath. Take another full breath. And then with your next inhale, slowly start to send the hips back, flex the toes, flex through the heel, toes to the sky, and start to lengthen through the back of that left leg. Uh, right leg, I'm sorry, right leg. We're gonna do both sides, but it's easier if we're all on the same side together. Let's take another three breaths here. And at the end of that third exhale, come on back forward. 
And this time, inhale, both arms high, lift from the heart, straight up. Most rental distance. Now, we use pigeons. Every pigeon that wins out. As you exhale, bring the hands together through heart center and take a twist to the right. Drop the left elbow over right knee. Lift the heart, press the palms into one another. Breathe fully, try to fill the belly and the lungs with the breath. Take two more breaths here. One more inhale. And then as you exhale, release, come back to center. Send the arms high, lift from the heart. Take a full breath in. And then as you exhale, release the hands. Bring them both inside that right foot and heel to the right foot, closer to the right edge of the mat. And then come on back into, you might need to scoot your right foot forward. Come on back into your, your lunge, into your lizard variation here with your right knee and right elbow in contact with each other. Keep around here. So keeping them both vertical to start. Keeping that sensation of the right heel grounding. So even though you're a little deeper in the lunge, you're still not over dropping in or over stretching, but using your muscles to keep yourself in the pose. Another breath in here. And then go ahead and open the toes to the right a little bit. Roll onto the outer edge of that foot. Let that right knee drop open. And let yourself drop in here to your degree. Maybe you take a little bit of side movement to drop it into the hips a little bit deeper. Maybe you're up on blocks here. Maybe some of you are down on forearms. You take whatever variation in your practice allows this morning. And we'll add the twist here. So you can stay right here if you'd like to add the twist. Start to turn the heart to the right. Bring the right hand on top of that right knee. And ground through that left hand. Bring the right shoulder blade onto your back. And just bring everything to the right. Your gaze, your shoulders, your heart. breath in and as you release come back through to center and then we're going to heel toe that right foot over to the left and come into our half pigeon so dropping the right knee if this upward facing version of pigeon doesn't work for your body you can come onto your back and cross right angle over left knee you can thread the arms through and interlace them around that left knee keep a little flex in that left toe and then just gently nudge your whole lower body toward your torso to your degree. Otherwise, you can be in the upward facing version. And just finding your space here. Maybe you have something under that right hip, a block or a pillow or a sweatshirt. If your hips are tight, that's a great way to help keep the squaring, help keeping the integrity of the pose. Sometimes a block might be too much, so a piece of clothing is often good because it's a little more forgiving. The block is not very forgiving at all. So I'm gonna take that out. It's a little too high. And I could use a sweatshirt there. Just a little added height under the hip to give it a little bit of a boost. And then you can walk your hands forward Maybe you come down to forearms, or if you do have a block, maybe you use that to just rest your forehead on so the back of the neck and the shoulders can soften. So we're gonna stay for a few breaths, so as much as you can, let your whole body find softness here. It doesn't mean your whole body is finding softness, but scan your whole body to find the places where you can create softness. So maybe it's in your jaw, on your face or your shoulders. Maybe your lower body is not able to soften as much, but you send your breath there and try to relax those muscles. Letting your body just ease into the pose.
We're going to take five more breaths here. Breaths. So really just try to fill the body. One more full breath. At the end of that, exhale. Start to walk your hands back up. If you're on your back, uncross and rock yourself back up to a seat. And we're going to bring that left leg in front and come into either a double pigeon, crossing the left ankle on top of the right knee, trying to stack the shins. So this is the most intense variation. You can extend the lower leg and just cross the left ankle over the right knee. That might be a little bit more easeful. Or if that doesn't work for your body, your knees, your joints come into a bound angle. And this one can be a little bit more extended than the first version that we were in. So you guys find the, the place for your legs, for your lower body. Try to get settled there. Try to get your sit bones nice and square. Sit up tall through the spine. We're just going to add a little bit of arm. So we'll take the right arm, inhale it high, and then bend the elbow, place that hand between your shoulder blades. And with the left hand, just take the elbow and nudge it a little closer to center. So really get that nice lengthening through the back of that right arm. And then press the back of the head into the arm so that you, probably your gaze is down when you're here. It's normal that you're kind of pushing your head down. So you want to just bring your gaze up so the middle of your head is pressing into that arm. So you can stay right here. If you want to add for the other arm, take that left arm, the palm facing toward the back of the room and come into a half bind. The left hand can just rest on the lower back. If you have a strap or even a piece of clothing nearby, you can put that into, um, to try to connect the arms or maybe you can walk the hands together without that and you come into the bind. So wherever you are sitting tall, you can again, let the face soften. You can let the eyelids close here. Just take a few deep breaths. We'll take one more inhale and then release the arms. Just stretch them out long, give a little shake, bring them down and then bring them in front trying to stay tall through the spine and just walking the hands forward, maybe an inch, maybe some of you come lower, so you really feel a little deeper into those hips. So as I'm walking my hands forward, just very, very minimally, I really can feel it deepen in that outer left hip. We haven't done that side yet, so that's a little bit tighter, but I also can feel it in the right hip. So we're just gonna stay when you kind of reach your edge here and just stay for a few breaths. Some of you might come all the way down to forearms. We're going to stay for two more breaths here. And gently start to make your way out. Uncross the legs. Send the both forward, just give them a little shake. And then just make your way back to your table. Come back through a cat cow. Inhaling fully and exhaling fully. And then again, tuck the toes, lift the hips, come into your downward facing dog. 
Just dropping the heels, lifting the hips, lengthening through the backs of the legs. Take another full breath here. And then with your next inhale, lift the left leg high, letting it float up, letting it open up. You can bend the knee or keep it straight, whatever feels good to you. Take another breath. And then as you exhale, releasing it down, and then we'll take that left leg all the way through the hands, drop the back knee, and we'll come into our low lunge on the left. So either grabbing your blocks, or maybe just starting with the hands up high on the knee, grounding into that left heel, guiding the left hip back just a little bit, making sure that knee stays stacked over the ankle. Just taking your time here to soften in. Noticing how this side feels compared to the other. And adjusting your, your softening into the pose. Maybe it takes a little bit longer on the side or maybe the side's a little more easeful. You can get a deeper stretch more quickly. Not that that's the goal. Speed is definitely not the goal here. Keep the shoulders heavy on your back and a little lift from the heart. Take two more breaths here. And then we'll start to guide the hips back, guide the left hip back, bring the toes to the side as you flex through the heel. Start to lengthen through the back of that left leg. Gaze can be just straight down at the mat. Past your leg, moving your forehead toward your shin. Take another two breaths here. <clears throat> Inhaling both arms high, lifting the heart, lengthening everything up, and then as you exhale, bring the hands together through to your heart center. We'll take a twist to the left, right elbow over left knee, lifting the heart, pressing the palms together, and then just settling into your pose. Five deep breaths, filling the body as much as you can. Exhale, release, come back to center. Send the arms high, lengthen through the spine, lift the heart, inhale. And then as you exhale, release the hands and bring them inside that left foot, heel toe, the left foot a little closer to the left edge of the mat. And we'll come into our lizard. So keeping the left shoulder, left knee connected, left knee is vertical. Palms are flat. And just settling in here, grounding into that left heel though here as well so that you're not over dropping in. Those that are able, maybe you come down to forearms, but not if, it, if you can only do it with dropping that knee open. Otherwise, stay up onto your palms or maybe even on a block here. For tight hips, you can be up high, give yourself a little bit more support. A few deep breaths. Giving the body time to soften in. Take another full deep breath. And then we're gonna heel toe that left foot to the right edge of the mat, dropping the knee, coming into our half pigeon on the left. So either coming into your forward facing or coming onto your back, crossing left ankle over right knee. Interlacing the hands through 
and coming onto your reclined version or staying upright. Maybe something underneath that left hip to give it a little height to keep it squaring. And then walking your hands forward and finding your place here where you can let the body soften. Let the head rest. If it doesn't reach the, the earth comfortably, maybe you stack your fists or stack your palms. And softening in, scanning the body and trying to let go of those places where it might be holding on, clenching a little bit. Softening the muscles on the face and the jaw. Softening the shoulders. Let's take three more deep breaths here. And then your third exhale, starting to come out, walking your hands back. If you're on your back, uncrossing and just rock and roll yourself forward so you come up to a seated pose and then we're going to bring that left uh, sorry the right leg around front and either coming into double pigeon with the right ankle crossed over the left knee or maybe you extend the lower leg and just come into your figure four here or maybe you come into a, a bound angle again or you can come into a wide leg and if you came into your bound angle before you can come into another variation here getting the inner thigh to open up there just making the sit, making sure the sit bones are grounded. Keeping if you're in your double pigeon or or half pigeon upright, keeping the feet flexed, protecting the joints, sitting nice and tall through the spine. So when you get your lower body situated, we'll take the arms, left arm, inhale it high, and then bend the elbow, place that left hand just between your shoulder blades, and then pressing the the middle of your head back against it so that you lift your gaze. Nice and tall. If you want to add the right arm, you can take that right arm out, palm facing toward the back of the room, and then bend it, let it come right onto your lower back for the half bind. Or if you want to try to walk the fingertips toward one another for the full bind, maybe they reach each other, or maybe you grab something, a strap or a piece of clothing to put between them to elongate. And then sitting nice and tall, heavy through the sit bones, lifted through the spine. Just take a few deep breaths again, letting the eyelids close here, the face soften. And take one more inhale and then exhale, release the arms. If you had the arms and just give them a little shake, you roll up through the shoulders. And then staying in your lower body, start with a long spine, start to lean your heart forward, bring the hands in front, and just take a, a gentle, slow walk forward to increase the intensity, but just to your degree. So of course, don't go too far. You don't wanna be in any kind of agony or pain here. You just wanna deepen the stretch a little bit. So whatever that is for you, maybe some of you are down low, Maybe some of you are up high. I'm going to stay for a few more breaths. So you take one more inhale, and then exhale, release. Walk yourself back up, uncross the legs, give them a little shake, and then come all the way down to your back. Hug the knees into the chest, give them a nice little squeeze. 
Find the corners of your back again, maybe some circles. And then bring the feet back down to the earth. And go ahead and come into a spinal twist, drop the knees to the right. And if it's okay on your back, drop the gaze and that left arm out to the left. If that's uncomfortable on your back, keep your gaze and your, and your arms straight ahead. And just let the knees drop over. Take one more full breath. And then come back through center. Just take a breath as you let your lower back settle. And then drop the knees to the left. And again, if it's okay on your back, bring that right arm out and the gaze to the right. Otherwise, you can just let everything be center and just drop the knees. And you'll still get a nice twist through the spine. One more full breath. And then come back to center. Keeping the knees bent for just another full breath, letting the lower back soften and imprint onto the mat here. And then go ahead and extend everything long for your Shavasana. Or you could bring your soles of the feet together for a Supdhuvada Konasana version. That's comfortable. Arms extended by your sides, like the eyelids get heavy, the face soften. You come into your space for Shavasana. Take a nice deep breath in through the nose. Send it out through the mouth, letting everything soften, get a little heavier. Settling into your breath, your ease. If you have more time to stay, I encourage you to. If you have a few more minutes to stay in your Shavasana, otherwise you can start to make your way out, deepening your breath, starting to bring some gentle movements to your fingers and your toes. And then with your next inhale, lengthen the arms overhead, stretch everything out long. And as you exhale, hug everything in tight. Bring the knees into the chest. Make your body into a tight little ball one last time. And then dropping your knees to one side. And just pause. Take another deep breath there. And then making your way back up to a comfortable upright. And bring the hands together at the heart center. And just use the next breath or two to bring back to mind your intention or your dedication or your focus, your thought. Try to see it clearly. Repeat it to yourself, maybe imprint those words or phrase in front of your head. And 
And let's honor those thoughts by bringing our hands to our crown, to our throats honoring our words, and our hearts honoring our souls and the light that shines in each one of us. Namaste. Thank you guys. So Thank nice you. to see you. I hope everyone is <laughs> going to see a lot more faces back. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you That's so much. That's wonderful. Thank you. Yes, yeah, stay well. I'll see you Thursday. You too. Did see you start Thursday. that all over again? <laughs> <laughs> you really? <laughs> Instant replay. I that was great. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, the class is for you guys, whatever you want. You know, yeah. of course, that they're all